Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, from me, Guy Monson, to our regular six-minute strategy summary. As monetary policy tightens around the world, investors have got some tough questions to ask about what this means for asset prices and for the global economy. So great has been the monetary stimulus since the great financial crisis almost 15 years ago that many asset markets are largely untested in today's world of tighter money. We see three principal known unknowns. First, how will the consumer react? Hit hard by rising oil and food prices, consumer confidence is close to record lows in the US and UK. On the other hand, consumer balance sheets are extraordinarily robust, flush with savings accumulated in the pandemic period. Second, how will markets react to quantitative tightening? The unwinding of the vast central bank balance sheets of bonds and mortgage-backed securities that will happen in the months and years ahead. We have very little historic evidence as to how markets will behave. You have to go back to the 1950s for any, any meaningful parallel. Thirdly and finally, house prices. They are rising at over 20% in the US and nearly 10% here in the UK, close to record levels. But cracks are beginning to appear. Mortgage applications are falling and of course interest rates and so mortgage rates are rising. These three key questions mean there is considerable uncertainty in the financial outlook and hence for asset prices. This underpins our cautious attitude today and we will look at what this means for asset allocation and for your portfolio in the slides ahead. So let's begin with our regular chart of asset price performance for the year to date. And you can see that despite a modest rally over the last two weeks, most assets are down sharply for the year to date. Global uh, UK gilts down 15%, global equities down 20%, the Nasdaq down almost 30%. And I haven't got on the slide here, but Bitcoin down almost 60% as we touch 19,000. On the right-hand side, the US dollar index continues its steady ascent, putting, of course, great pressure on emerging market financing. And those US 10-year yields beginning just to roll over that red line as recession fears surface around the world. Now let's go back to those known unknowns we looked at earlier, those points of uncertainty for the world economy, and see what they mean for asset allocation. First of all, the impact of the war on Ukraine has hit global consumption extremely hard. Consumer confidence numbers are sharply negative in the US and the UK. In fact, they are at lows normally seen in the depths of previous recessions. The triggers are easy to see on the right-hand side, the surge in global food prices and the rise in Brent crude. I am glad to say both of those at least are flatlining somewhat over the last six to eight weeks. What makes the response hard to predict, though, is the extremely robust position of consumer balance sheets. On the left-hand side, you can see that surge in personal savings in the US that happened during lockdown as people were unable to spend. And that means there's massive cash on balance sheet, almost $3 trillion in excess savings. You can see that on that chart of M1 demand deposits, a very similar feature as you see in the US and Europe. The second unknown is how markets will react to QT, quantitative tightening, the gradual unwind of vast central bank balance sheets. They total, as you can see on the left, somewhere around $25 trillion, or a staggering 30% of global GDP. On the right-hand side, you can see the 12-month rate of change and see that sharp slowdown. We expect that to put pressure on bond markets. We'll probably see bond yields overshoot to the upside, add to asset price volatility, and create a level of uncertainty. After all, we haven't got a historic model, except perhaps we're going back to the 1950s when the Federal Reserve pivoted from fighting the war to fighting inflation. Thirdly and finally, we have to ask some questions about UK, UK and US house prices, in fact, global house prices. On the right-hand side, you can see the case Shiller Home Price Index. That's the best indicator of US house prices rising a staggering 20.4% year on year, the highest since it was first recorded in the 1990s. A similar but slightly less dramatic move in the UK, UK house prices up 10% for the year to date. But you can see on the left some cracks beginning to appear, that red line mortgage applications beginning to fall as the blue line mortgage rates beginnings to rise. However, I think a classic housing price crash into this recession is unlikely. Why? On the left-hand side of the next chart, you can see how low household debt services are as a percentage of income, below 10%. That means households are well protected. And on the right, you can see the extraordinary healthy level of uh, household net worth overall. That's houses, stock markets, pensions, etc., running far above trend. So again, we have a robust consumer and a robust household owner. 
So what do these three known unknowns mean for our asset allocation policy? Well, first of all, they mean uncertainty. We don't know how the consumer will react to higher interest rates. We don't know how the housing market will react to higher mortgage rates. And we're uncertain how the bond market will react to months and probably years of sales by central banks as they wind down their inflated balance sheets. All of this also means a high risk of policy error. Central bank is simply getting it wrong. That means until we know more, until the skies clear a little bit, we're going to be cautious. We're underweight bonds, both governments and corporates, underweight equities with a bias towards more defensive, yield-producing equities, overweight alternatives where we see defensive holdings like gold coupled with infrastructure where we get inflation plus returns, also renewables, and a tactical overweight in cash really to give us opportunities if these market declines accelerate further from here. All of this means a low-risk portfolio, including portfolio insurance, where that's, po where that's possible. I hope this gives you some idea of the challenges we're facing at Saracen, what this means for your portfolio, and how we're reacting in terms of asset allocation. Thank you.